And I believe this is the right one to get to the bubble frog in the middle, but we'll see. But that's certainly it. Huzzah, it is. <laughs> Hello, all you spell lovers, and welcome back to the episode of Tears of the Kingdom. Speaking of the bubble frog, we need to actually find where it is. Oh! No, this one's actually completely different. I th okay, wow. It got us to a treasure, though, so let's see what we got in here. And we got the, fa the Phantom Greaves. Okay, cool. I mean, that's a pleasant surprise. Now, let's see what's down here. So that means to get to the Bobble Frog, then we probably actually need to go through this kind of dungeon, cave, whatever this is supposed to be. But, uh... Now that's I don't buy that surprise. Oh no, it is up there. Okay. I was wondering, it's like a pretty sure there's this one spot to get this. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Bubble Frog, but we, we need your bubble gem. Thank you. Well we don't need it. But I want it. <laughs> like how Link just kind of looks around like what's happening? And he's just like idolizes. <laughs> it's like I accept my fate, whatever happened this year. <laughs> But now I really want to explore the area more because we barely stepped in foot last episode and we already found a bright cap, <laughs> which I think we can sell for pretty good if we cook them and make them into potions or whatever. But we also found a bunch of arrows, which is also great because it seems unlike Breath of the Wild and of course previous Zelda games, finding arrows and let's say bombs, and bombs are not so bad, but these arrows and other materials actually seem a little bit more scarce. Oh, hey, Reed, Dead Cat! <laughs> uh, I love how you can just use any kind of elements just to get rid of them, but also the fact that they don't attack the Gibdos or just any other enemies while well, they're just frozen. Another thing that I actually am curious to know about, because I know that the fresh, fresh, the fast fruit doesn't one shot kill them. I was going to say that I know that the fast fruit could actually one-shot the stout enemies. I think that's really freaking cool. It's too bad it's not the same with the like, goes, but you would think that would also be the case because they're also undead. But like, I'm, I'm not going to question the logic. I'm sure that would just be too OP if they had made that. <laughs> I wonder if fast fruit also works. It does. Well, you guys really needed a bath. Just saying. Okay, wow. Minoru actually does a pretty decent amount of damage against these guys just from slapping them. I feel kind of bad, but at the same time, they're the ones going after us to fight. <laughs> oh, it's found more arrows. That was just by this. I also like how many hidden <laughs> sinkholes there are. Why is there so many? <gasps> I love Peplets. Hello, Peplet. To him, you just photobombed it. <laughs> but that's okay, you can photobomb away, my dude. I am not going to defeat these things. You know we could take care of them for us. <laughs> so it looks like that's just really all there is to do down here, which is unfortunate, because it looks like this could be some kind of mini dungeon or something like that. Also, would you consider the Spare Temple to be an actual dungeon, or would you consider it to be a mini dungeon? So, I like to think about going into the dungeon, like getting Minoru or Self to be a part of the Spare Temple, so that way I see it as a temple, but I could also see why it would be like a mini dungeon if you don't include the part of getting Minoru. Because that whole segment is actually really, really fun. I really like that part of the game. And all that's in this little area over here is a bunch of plants and stuff like that, and that's about it. That's unfortunate, so not too much to do in here, but hey, that's okay. It was still really fun, and I also really like exploring little areas like this. So, comic question of the day. What is one or a few parts of the game that you really enjoy, whether it's and just go, like, going into an area like this to explore, or maybe you really just like do the dungeons, or even just some boss fights. It's too bad it's too warm to put on any kind of other armor. The one thing that I haven't found yet is the helm or headpiece for <laughs> the Gerudo Vow. Because I really want to put on the sand boots to be able to just 
run here but it would make transportation a whole lot easier for us. Then again, we do have mineral you could just spread around it. <laughs> I would just like to use it because we just got it before. I'm pretty sure we've already explored this way over here. I guess the only problem is with going on many roads, I can't really run. Yeah, that's right, I'm taking a picture of you Wasteland Coyote, and now I'm just going to run away because I don't really feel like fighting you. I'm pretty sure this area right here is where we fought our first Molduga. Tulin, we don't need to destroy the cactus that badly. Like, I know you want to. We don't need to- oh, th this- I was gonna say, is that really going to just try to continue to go after us? <gasps> You know, there's wild sand seals. One thing I want to know, can we feed them? Probably not, because I think they'll just run away from us. But it would be really cute if we were to be able to. It's like, they're so precious. I love them so much. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure they're just going to be... Just like regular old sand seals. Just look how cute they are. They make me so happy. Oh! These ones have those slightly different fur colors than the other ones do. And just, I'm happy that we could just feed the sand seal, so let's see here. We leave that far away enough. Get out of here, Coyote. Ah! Stay to the you, <laughs> you scared off the sand seal. But that's okay. I kind of figured you wouldn't be able to. But that would be so cool if you were to be you for you were able to. <laughs> Where's the heart, guys? Where's the heart? <laughs> oh we definitely have not explored this area because I would have already found Addison and helped him before going in here. So the question is, what can we do to help Addison in this area? Because it doesn't really look like we have a whole lot to work with. But there ought to be something around here. And Addison is one of those <laughs> parts of the game that I really enjoy. I don't know why I really enjoy just building the structures to hold up some signs. So I can see it being annoying, but at the same time it just ends up being really fun. Just see with what you can come up with. Well, let's just give it a little bit of a, a hat here. Just while we explore this area. That or we'll use a bunch of our wings and other materials that we already have on us. So I like how we can do that. I also love how we can actually do counterweight. It also feels like there would be a Korok up here somewhere. And the mask says there is not. I have a feeling this is not actually going to work, but the only way to try it is <laughs> to find out. Oh, if it do. Oh, it does! Cool, sometimes it would just budge slightly like that. It would be like, it doesn't work, and I am also very surprised that he's standing at us, and I thought it was just going to topple over, but I guess there was enough counterweight and enough pressure on it or something like that. <laughs> and I like how this whole area is only just Addison. Like, I'm guessing there's something in a sky island or something over us. But on the plus side, we got ourselves these spicy seafood rice balls and a little little butt. Oh, thanks for the rose, buddy. I appreciate you too. I also love how his hair is exactly like President Hudson's. <laughs> oh, and now all of a sudden, all zap shrooms and zap fruits and stuff like that are just appearing. It's just, it's like, alright. And I also have to wonder if we would be able to actually use these as wings. We could probably put some wheels on it and start flying around with them, but I'm not gonna do that right now. We could try that another time. And I'm surprised there's some birds like that in the area. Like usually those would be found. A place not full of sand and full of heat like this. Usually they would just be in the tropical regions. <laughs> but like I'm not complaining either because it would bring some life in the desert, other than Coyotes and random Koroks out of the blue. <laughs> awesome, now it's cold enough that we can finally run with our sand boots on. Love how those are instantly in this game. I don't know. Oh, I can't go any further. I was gonna say it's going awfully dark, and that is probably why we made it to the edge of the world. <laughs> Edison was so close to that. He could have gotten lost. And I was like kind of surprised that when that actually happens, you don't just make it where you can't actually see the mini-map. Like, that would be really interesting if that actually became a mechanic just occasionally just having a sandstorm. Like, it, it's the thing that happens in real life. Ah, okay, I was wondering if we could actually like step on that and go forwards with it. But, no, we cannot. But, at least we have Minoru. We can just walk out here, just like we can walk in lava. 
I still will use try not to blink, or rather try to blink because that will just defeat you. But I like how there's just this, this random spot up here that you can just walk on. It's so like on the other two sides, obviously, we got the. I guess the. Uh, Sand Sea or Sand River, whatever you would like to call it. And this was the area I was thinking. No, this was not the area I was thinking off of the Walduga. This spot, that was really trippy. Just watching the the sand fall down as you're gliding over it. <laughs> but this is the racing one, which I still don't quite know how to get through this quickly. Oh, those poor keys. It's getting destroyed by mineral. I mean, that's fair enough. They did kind of get up in their personal bubble. <laughs> now, I was just looking at the map to port. I was just looking at the map to find the next area to <laughs> explore. And I saw this little area right here. It just looks like a little cat or a little dude smiling. Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> now we're just going to go towards the doomed and ruins. See what we can find over here. I like how there's just a bunch of enemies. Yeah, you wake up, buddy. I'm going to slap you. Because you just woke up everybody. Especially saying these guys are now terrifying. Because they have their elements. You know what? I'm, not, I'm just going to blow you up. Because you're not even running away. Like, you can see there's things that are just going to explode. And you're just standing there. Oh, nice shot, Tulin. I was just going to blow those dudes up. But they it just, it just kind of did that for me. And I'm so glad that the sages can't get damaged. That would suck. <laughs> oh, I, I believe last time when we actually went up here, we kind of cheesed it. I think you flew up here. So it is interesting having to actually go and fight the enemies. Yeah, we see you way over there. We're just going to blow you up because you're just standing there letting us just hit you off. And I like how this right up here is just sticking up and not even moving until now. <laughs> Now it's more entertaining to go around here than last time. Thank you too much for making it a literal breeze to get across here. Um, oh, there's a Moldugo here. This is the spot I was thinking of that... I don't remember the character's name, but... The Gerudo that made the shield and the swords for us. This is the Moldugo that she unfortunately had to meet. But, on the plus side, we now have bombs that we can actually use to get this one to get down. So that will make it a whole lot easier for us. And, ooh, that weapon was really strong. <laughs> and we got it down before it could even go back in. Well, Dugos are also one of those creatures that I feel really bad for attacking. Because they're literally just hunting. I mean, with the size of them... They're probably really hungry, but on the plus side, we get items and really good equipment. It's like Royal Claymore, worth 22 plus, <laughs> plus 8 attack power. Uh, Volt Fruit, delicious little things. I have an unfortunate fate of going and buying dragon fruit and having ones that are not so good. Like, I don't know my, with my luck with that. <laughs> I used to have them as a kid. My mom loves dragon fruit, but now every time I try to find one that's good, it ends up either being like, I don't even know, bad or good. We made it back to one of the rooms. It's so cool actually being able to see what the desert looks like without having just a gigantic shroud. With all these gigantic leviathan, at least I'm assuming these things are leviathan, these skeletal structures, it's just really cool. I also just realized. <laughs> These statues, how weapons we can actually take? I thought they were just stone weapons. Okay, here the end. Oh, is it a little chew? Okay. We can leave that chew up now. I love them too much. <laughs> They're cute enemies. It's like Wizroads. I don't really want to attack Wizroads because they just want to play with us in the most deadliest way possible. <laughs> and I don't know, it looks like there was going to be something over here that we can just get. I'm guessing this is pointing to where you would find Riju. I know where else where that is. Is that a Korok that I see up there? It most definitely is a Korok. <laughs> I love how this is still in the desert despite there being like very little plants. And up Death Mountain too. It's like these little Koroks. 
They're everywhere, except for the depths. I could understand them being in the depths, but that would be really cool if you would be able to actually find them. Oh, I love how this place like, even has green wood to it. And I'm so glad that those guys in the background are so nice that they decide they will just let us have a conversation with the Kohawk. Gotta love pay to win. I just wanted to take care of that guy because it's more terrifying than the others. I don't know why I didn't decide to just straight up attack these guys when they're just going point blank like that. Sometimes it's more fun just doing the most illogical thing that you can actually think of. Oh, oh we got this going around. Ooh, like this structure right here is something that we didn't already find. It we didn't even find when it was shot like. I'm guessing there's probably just some enemies around here, but the way there's flags out there kind of makes you think this could be a mini game. Okay, so there isn't anybody over here, but there is a Korok though. I still don't get how these ones work. It's like I'm pretty sure you could just land on them, but then sometimes I try to land on them, and then the Koroks are just like, nope, that's not good enough for me. Okay, so there's another one of these statues. I thought that maybe it would be pointing towards. Riju is, but this is nowhere near where you would find Riju originally. Hi, Electric Chu. How are you, <laughs> how are you doing? <laughs> Zooming right in there. Uh, such lovely teeth you have. You also, just use some like, bombs or something to take it down, but I'd rather get it high first. Oh, that was a little bit too hot for Port Link, but hey, that's okay. So I guess we could actually like hit this thing. Ah, darn it. <laughs> I like how it just kind of shook itself off there. Oh, and now it's stopping not me again. I, I don't blame you, dude, for trying to attack us at that point. So maybe we could just do spin to win and hope that it actually hits it. And that time it did. It's also too bad is that, again, like, there's such limited time in the desert where it's not super hot. We'll take that Guru Shield because we can get another one of these beautiful shields right here. But it also has Shield Guard up plus one. I don't know what to want to take to get rid of though. These all have really good ones. Oh, hi little Sand Seal, how are you doing? It's so cute, I wonder if it was going to go after the Shock Fruit to eat or not. So I wonder if this is where the statues were pointing toward it. There's got to be something. Depends on if this one is pointing towards it, and it looks like it is it is pointing towards. Interesting. But I highly doubt it is because of the like like over here. <laughs> Not that we're pointing yet. Surprise, surprise, another Korok right over here. <laughs> I was like, there's gotta be something else like other than just a random like like. But there isn't even like any other chest, but that's already two Koroks. They're like very close to each other over here, like, it's cool. Well, what the hey, hey. So yeah, this really does look like it is because there's this, well, I got that statue right here pointing right at us. So maybe this, this Korok is supposed to be <laughs> one of the, the Grudo guards. A few inches later. And now I see that there's a hole right in the middle. Is this something for, you know, ah, now I hear it. So, do we need to... Okay, oh, I thought I heard like... <laughs> I thought I heard a bubble frog down here or something like that. What are we supposed to do here then? Ought to be something. Like, I don't want to just waste bomb bags. Okay, there we go, so we can. Oh, that, there we go. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> Glad there was something. Ooh, best Gerudo underground ruins. Oh, my goodness. I love it. I love how there's just so much to do. Also, at some point, we need to go back to the underground bunker in the uh, Grudo Village. We have to do that this episode because I totally forgot that there was actually a path that we didn't explore before because I don't think we were able to actually get there or go to it, rather, when we were doing the original quest. And this one's already badly damaged itself. Like, how big darn! I thought there would just be more to it. And by to it, I mean <laughs> more durability. But at least we have a few cannons that we could actually use. It's so satisfying to do this. 
Honestly, one of my favorite uh, items that they actually just introduced to this game. Okay, who's going to be the first victim to our explosive powers? Oh, I like how it's just showing fast. Oh, hi, like, like. How's it going? Uh, you're lucky I missed there because it was a bad aim. <laughs> Like, like, I also really didn't see him to uh, like to it that much, so it must he must have been doing the most amount of damage against it. Ooh, and a scimitar. We can also keep that so we can uh, get another one of those really cool scimitar weapons. I love how that even that weapon is in this game, but this time not from the champion. I forgot her name. And I also love how Riju actually probably took her weapon. Or rather inherited her weapons. Oh, we didn't even get diamonds from this. That sucks. But that's okay. At least we still get really good weapons and stuff from this. Okay, so now we found a blocked off spot. So that means there is really multiple ways. I'm just going to make sure that we actually did find a spot that's blocked off and not that just missing a way to actually get in. And sometimes it's like that. Oh, yep. Yeah. Looks like that might be the case, but it could still be. Ah, unfortunately, it's still a caved off area. Oh, never mind. It's like damn pace grave. <laughs> now there's lots of rocks too that we can use. I'm gonna fuse them. Nope. Oh, yeah, see, with the weapons that are not as strong, is uh, I use them a little. A little well, <laughs> So I use them more for rock explosions and stuff like that, and ooh, Vanuboros is Divine Helm. Now we have two of them, and I didn't even realize that we had a quest for that to actually find this helm in the first place. <laughs> oh, you didn't like take it. There's gotta be more to this cave though than just the helm though. Because there's multiple exploding walls at the beginning of it. Okay, so maybe not, but we still have this wall that we can explode though. Sorry, Noble, you just, just about got into the crossfire here. <laughs> and, oh, okay. Yeah, looks like it really is the only thing in here. I just always want to double check, but there's also not a check mark, which means there's still a bubble frog somewhere around here that we need to find. And, you know what? The question is, where is it going to be? So what he questioned. That's why we are exploring here. Oh! We found another statue. Ah, here it is. Hi, Bobble Frog. Sorry, we can't just have to eat you. So, uh, we can get your bubble gem. Thank you very much. And, oh, there's that check mark that we wanted to see. Now we can just get out here. First, we did a pick up salt because we may as well. It's good for cooking because sometimes I just forget to grind salt and stuff like that. I'm just like, what do I do with myself? Now it's also a lot more cool, so we can actually run around more freely, which is nice. And I still have to wonder, like, why is that structure there? Other than for there being a core rock, like, it, it feels like there could have been something more to that. Right now, I can't think of anything, unfortunately. Now we're just gonna port back to the Highlands, Grudel Highlands, because why not? <laughs> no, it's not technically the desert, but I could also see it being a part of it, because of how close they are. And it, <laughs> thanks to uh, our weapon over here, we're just warm enough to be able to actually survive in the cold, but just barely. And I love how you could just put on like warm weapons like this and be just fine. And there is an Addison that we see. <laughs> well, we'll see if this one, if we'll need like 800 wings or if there's more to it or more to this one than there actually is. It looks like it's just those two. But 
That's okay. We'll make two. <laughs> By two, I mean three. A few minutes later. Now, I don't know if this photo will actually work, but uh, again, the only way to find out is to know if it does, and it does. I think it's just cards that are actually saving it right here. Yes, I, I'm also still surprised that he's actually standing. I like how it just says President Hudson, like the sign itself is Hudson. I mean, imagine if that actually was the case. If after all of this, the sign actually was President Hudson in disguise. <laughs> kind of like a yee. <laughs> now that would be interesting. But also you never know, because Addison is also here. He is a man of mystery. <gasps> Not a metal bottle. Wow, Addison. You're so romantic, buddy. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's just a bunch of keys flying around. Another thing that you don't really see that much in this game as you do in Breath of the Wild. Like how after all that, there's just that sign right there that we could have used. <gasps> Yo, hello, High Nox. How are you doing, buddy? I'm going to wake you up the cannon now because uh, we still have a shield cannon. <laughs> I like how despite it being so cold, we still have the, the, the uh, fire going on down there. Okay, hopefully this doesn't hit for Link, though. Maybe we should just uh, use it so we can actually hit the eyeball. Because that's gonna be better than, uh, than not. I'm surprised this one also doesn't have any kind of weak. Okay, it does have protection on his ankles. Because if it didn't, I would've just been like, kind of protect yourself, buddy. You could do better than that. And there we go. I'm sorry, Hinox, but I wanted your stuff. Oh, I should take a picture of it. Whoa, that is a lot of food that just fell from it. So these seared steaks and stuff like that, were they in his belly before we defeated them? Oh, little fox. I didn't even know where he was. Oh, it's so cute. Little snow fox, too. I love foxes so much. One of my favorite foxes are actually Linux foxes. And I have a feeling this dude right here, or rather not dude, I have a feeling this right here might just be a stone talus, and it is. Or not really a stone talus, but an ice cross talus. <laughs> okay, hold on guys, I I love how many is up there. <laughs> oh, and it's already just going straight for uh, Minoru and the rest of them. It's too bad we don't have like fire or anything to actually be able to use on it. it is Mind you, it gives me tits, I swear to do. But it's just out with a matter of survive. <laughs> you little booger. Actually, mind you, I wonder if we could just use the cannon to frost. <gasps> we so can. Okay, that could have been a whole lot quicker if I actually put on warm, <laughs> warm armor and use this silly little weapon. I love how it's only just a fan from that. In an area that's just full of ice, you have to wonder if there's gotta be something here or is there- Oh, it's a moblin! One of these probably has a Korok in it, but they're all probably just enemies. It doesn't hurt to try to find out though. I feel bad for them. And now we just run away. They'll probably just get frozen again after we leave. I also have to wonder how they got frozen in the first place. No. A Lionel? Here we go. We'll, we'll go fight this Lionel. It'll be the first one that we will fight on the overworld. I also love how these guys don't actually attack until you actually show that you're actually a threat. I appreciate it, and hopefully <laughs> we'll actually fight this one a whole lot easier than the ones that we fought in the Colosseum. That one was actually really fun, because it's just a Lionel area. Hopefully this dude doesn't decide to do us support away, but also we get to figure out, or rather, I get to figure out how to actually fight, fight a spear line. 
Okay, and you just put it away like that, dude. I mean, fair enough. It's probably a smart way. It's probably the smartest thing to actually do. Oh, there's also a shrine that we can do over yonder. I guess that's another reason, good reason to go over here to uh, figure out what to do. Okay, come on. Just I want you to try to uh, fight me. I wonder if we mount it from this side. Mm, probably could, but it's not really. Okay, two wins probably not the best idea to do against the Lionel. Okay. So what to do is charge attack. Which, okay. Oh, I saw that coming. <laughs> like that, although that didn't take that long for it to like, come and fight us, but um, take number two against the Lionel. Hopefully this time it will be a bit better. You could also probably mount the Lionel from at that point. So, uh, good to know if it starts roaring and starts charging up, it should probably back up. <laughs> I also don't know how good this weapon actually is against Lionel. It feels like it's mostly just going to just try to blow an enemy off. And whew, I'm glad we could actually very rush there. It's too bad that weapon breaks so easily though. It's also too bad we can't freeze the Lionels. But at the same time, I can see why it wouldn't allow us to actually freeze them. That would be very, very cheap and a very easy way to actually get them. Plus the fact that they have a lot of fur on, so I wouldn't see why it would freeze them. So take number two against the Lionel, and this time I'm actually using a Lionel Bowl against him, because I want to know like, how much damage one can do against itself like this. But also I wonder if we could actually mount it. Oh, we didn't even like, get its head that time, but it, that's okay. Now at least we can mount it to it actually give us a little bit of damage. So I don't actually know. Actually, mind you, we should probably just try to cause fire on the ground. We can't really do that right now, but I think that would probably be a pretty good idea. Ow! Oh. At least we have a little bit more defense now, and I just put on some more armor that should hopefully be able to do a little bit more damage against us as well, or rather a little bit more damage against it. So close to getting it. Oh, we'll just finish it off with a line bowl. Wonder if we'll get a bow from this dude or not, but whew, took us three times. <laughs> it's not too bad. And ooh, okay, so it's a neutral. So that's really cool. <laughs> now, I think we'll sell. See? Great sell. See? That's a bit speech impediment right there. Sometimes I can mix up my, like, spaces. But I was gonna say, let's see what is inside of this shrine. See how easy or hard it will be. Oh! Hi, Octorok! I wasn't even trying to go for the, like, the fake chest. It, it, it was just there. You know what, instead of trying to actually counter this guy, I'm just use an eyeball to actually attack it. So I don't know if we actually get anything from it. Oh, some rupees and stuff. This is mostly what I was going towards. I'm slightly distracted. Aw, it's the Chu family. No, you guys should just really just leave the Chu jellies alone. They're not doing anything. We just came in their home. And you guys just tried to attack them. See, this is like... Their neighbor. <laughs> oh, oh, that's so cute. Okay, so now let's see what the shrine is. Oh, it's a robber's blessing. Okay, cool. And the little shit one, too. I love the writing that just goes up with there. Thanks for the topaz, Rauru and Sonia. We appreciate ya. <laughs> so, I think with that, then we shall leave it here. The next episode, I think we might actually go over to Death Mountain and just kind of wander there because we wandered through the desert now and technically the tundra or whatever this area is. <laughs> Highlands and the Highlands is what I was going to say. That or maybe we'll go in the depths. I'm not really sure where we're going to go next. So if there's an area that you would like to see us go towards, just let me know because... I'm up to just exploring places. It's really fun to do. Maybe we'll go to uh, that. <laughs> Maybe we'll go to that next episode. I don't know, but we'll see. But until then, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up. 
So that does that wrap up this video. Link down in the comments down below. Do what you do, and I will see you in the next video. That poor true jelly. <laughs> okay, it's still alive. <laughs> Peace.